me tell you guys a story about Stephen Puffa. Now, Stephen was a retired veteran of the United States military living in Michigan in 2013. Now, at the time, unfortunately, Stephen was homeless. Like a lot of other returning vets, he had a hard time transitioning back into civilian life. And one afternoon, while drinking some beers with a buddy, he decided to climb the roof of an abandoned building for a little bit of fun. And Stephen will admit that was a wrong thing to do. He was also arrested immediately for trespassing. And a few days later, he was in front of a judge. And he ended up spending almost a month in jail. Now, his time in jail wasn't because he was trespassing. See, he was fined $2,600, but because he was homeless and unemployed, he couldn't pay. So the judge sentenced him to almost a month in jail. That ended up costing the city $2,300 to house him. And along with that, it also cost Stephen a job that he had lined up for the following week. And it took him months before he found an alternative job that paid him less per hour. So incarceration impacts the community, it impacts the individual, it also impacts the uh, families. So men and women enter our system uh, for reform. Unfortunately, most of the time, they don't get it. Because of the bottom line, our focus on for-profit prisons, oftentimes uh, programs, vocational programs, educational programs, or even therapy, mental health, things to get uh, inmates back on track and, and, and ready to go back into the world, those resources are gone. Mass incarceration is a drain on taxes and often leads to more crimes and recidivism, which is folks being rearrested. So, I want to talk to you guys today about how big this problem is, who is impacted by it, and why should we care? Okay, so how big this problem is? All right, the U.S. locks up. Right now, we have 2.3 million people incarcerated. That's more than any other country in the world. We also have over 1,700 state prisons built, 102 federal prisons, almost 1,000 juvenile facilities, 3,283 local jails, 79 Indian co uh, country jails, along with military prisons, immigration detention centers, and so forth. Um, sentencing uh, have also become much stricter. Overcrowding has become a great problem, um, and so we find ourselves in situations where people like Stephen being arrested for trespassing and not paying his fine are housed side by side with murderers, gang members who have huge criminal careers, violent criminals, um, and this certainly doesn't do anybody any good. Now, who's impacted? First, the individual. Again, I've already told you Stephen lost the job he had lined up because of this. <laughs> um, Oftentimes, folks who are arrested tend to come from economically and socially disadvantaged backgrounds, and so they have a harder time paying off these fines. Uh, incarceration often exacerbates the issue to begin with. Was it uh, a mental health issue? Was it an addiction? Was it poverty that led to their, uh, their criminal behavior? Without proper treatment and education, oftentimes these, these individuals come out worse than when they went in. Uh, Families are also impacted dramatically by this because when you remove a member of the family and you put them in jail, that's an income source that's lost. Um, it also destroys the relationships that are built uh, between fathers and sons and mothers and daughters. Um, and communities lose able-bodied people who could be working. And then ultimately you and I are impacted by this. See, we live in these cities. We live in these towns and these communities. And oftentimes, you know, we complain that, hi, hey, if the, the dad had been there, if the mom had been there, maybe these children wouldn't have turned out this way. And we also cheer when we hear that judges hand out super strict sentences. We go, yeah, that serves them right for committing that crime. But we often don't recognize or realize the cost that that has on our community, on the human lives. Now, why should we be concerned? Um, we talk about this nation being a great nation, but again, we house more people in our jails than any other country in the world. Does that really make us great? Uh, we have paid for and built more than 6,000 facilities to hold prisoners. On average, each prisoner costs, costs us $28,000 a year. That ultimately costs the nation $80 billion a year. Our prison industry costs us that much. So. Ultimately, there are alternatives, I think, and, and uh, more flexible sentence, sentencing guidelines allowing judges to consider more details than just what the book says about a particular crime. Um, vocational training, family counseling, 
these will offer courts a lot more options and at a significantly reduced cost to the nation. Um, as I've demonstrated, I think stricter sentencing leads to overcrowding, which leads to uh, the cutting of educational programs and less access to health care, which ultimately is terrible and um, is a terrible impact on not only the individual but also our nation. Um, when you take a mother or father away from a family, it creates a bad environment. So I think we owe it to people like Stephen and many, uh, and many others like him to make a concerted effort to end mass incarceration and seek real alternatives. Now I had one. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was.